Welcome everyone to this lecture by Learn Civil Engineering on the viscosity of fluid. We had already defined viscosity in a previous lecture, but here we will be looking at dynamic and kinematic viscosity and their derivations in more detail, with an example question at the end to test your understanding. We know that fluids deform under the action of an applied shear force. The fluid resists shear deformation, However, the level of resistance is not sufficient to limit the deformation to a fixed extent, and so the fluid flows. The viscosity of a fluid, donated by mu, gives a measure of the resistance offered by the fluid to a shear deformation. Consider a small, initially cubic fluid element within a large body of fluid that is subject to a simple shearing flow, uz, relative to the coordinate direction, z. Here the situation is being shown schematically. Note that the fluid element contains and is completely surrounded by the fluid. The base of the fluid element, located at Z0, moves with speed UZ0, and the top of the fluid element, located at Z0 plus delta Z, moves at a greater speed of UZ0 plus delta Z. The action of the shear flow deforms the fluid element from its initial cubic shape the dashed lines, into a rhombus shape, the shaded blue area. The deformation is produced by a shear stress, denoted tau, acting on the fluid element. The level of deformation produced is measured by the rate of shear strain, which for our fluid element is given by delta u over delta z equals u z naught plus delta z minus u z naught, all divided by delta z where delta u denotes the change in velocity across the fluid element, and delta z is the distance over which the velocity change occurs. In most common fluids, the applied shear stress, tau, is proportional to the rate of shear strain, delta u over delta z. The constant of proportionality is known as the dynamic viscosity of the fluid, which we denote by mu. This equation then becomes tau equals mu times by du over dz. Making the transition to this equation, we have taken the limit as the size of the fluid element tends to zero, i.e. delta u over delta z tends to du over dz as delta z tends to zero. This equation is known as Newton's law of viscosity. It is also common to use the kinematic viscosity of the fluid denoted nu, which is defined as nu equals mu over rho. Dynamic viscosity has dimensions of m, l to the power of minus 1, t to the power of minus 1, and SI units of kilograms per meter per second, or pascal seconds. And kinematic viscosity has dimensions of l squared times t to the power of minus 1, and SI units of meter squared per second. So now that we've had a look at the theory behind fluid viscosity, let's have a look at an example question to test our understanding. A block of mass m slides down an inclined plane while lubricated by a thin film of paraffin oil with viscosity mu. The oil film has thickness delta z which is assumed to be small here, and the base area of the block is A. Derive an expression for the terminal velocity u0 of the block, and then find u0 if A equals 200 centimetres squared, M equals 5 kilograms, delta Z equals 2 millimetres, alpha equals pi over 6 radians, and mu equals 1.0 kilograms per meter per second. Pause the video here and have a go at this question, applying the theory we have just learnt. Okay, now that you've had a chance to attempt this question yourself, let's work through it. Starting off, we will annotate all of the forces acting on the block on the diagram. Firstly, due to gravity, we have the weight of the block producing the vertical force of mg which is the mass of the block times by gravity. 
This results in a force acting parallel to the slope in the downwards direction, and using trigonometry, we get that the force is equal to mg times by sine alpha, where alpha is the angle of the slope in radians. And then secondly, we have a reactive force of F parallel to the slope in the opposite direction. We know that at terminal velocity, the block will not be accelerating, or in other words, it is sliding at a constant velocity. Therefore, all forces acting on the block are in equilibrium. Resolving forces down the slope then, taking down the slope to be the positive direction, we get mg times by sine alpha minus f is equal to zero. We will save this equation for later use. As we defined earlier in this video, Newton's law of viscosity gives tau is equal to mu times by du over dz. Knowing that force is equal to stress times area, or in other words, F equals tau times A, we can substitute in Newton's law of viscosity to give F equals A times mu times du over dz, which is approximately equal to A times mu times u naught over delta z. Therefore, our first equation becomes mg times by sine alpha minus a times mu times u naught over delta z equals zero. Rearranging for the terminal velocity u naught, we get u naught equals delta z times mg times sine alpha all divided by a times mu. So that's the derived expression for the terminal velocity that the question initially asked for, but now let's try substituting in the values for the equation. With a equals 0.02 meters squared, m equals 5 kilograms, delta z equals 0.02 meters, alpha equals pi over 6 radians, and mu equals 1.0 kilograms per meter per second, we get that the terminal velocity u naught is equal to 2.5 meters per second. This has been a lecture by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this lecture useful at all, please show support by subscribing to the channel and leaving a like on the video. If you do have any remaining questions or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.